what formula and why. It's very important. We just blindly have been following formulae because that's what's been given to us. Now you have a whole range of choices. Where would you choose and which formula would you choose? What is applicable today? What is available? And what will be the future? Let's have Ramesh to tell us looking into these. So I use SRK2 with good results. Two. All those who feel the same, please put your hand up. SRK2. Two. two. No way. No way. SRK2 with good results, Arul. No way, no way. Yes. So SRK2. quite a few of us are here who no use way. SRK2 with good results, isn't it? Why do we need a modern formula? For accuracy, precision and poetry in biometry, please spend some time looking at Warren Hill's site and look at it every year because every six months to one year he upgrades it and it's worth seeing. Biometry measurements are part of the story. The, the real McCoy is that you have to have a rexis that overlaps the optic. If you don't do that, you're going to have results like plus 0.5 this way or that. We all owe a, a great debt of gratitude to Dr. Graham Bar Barrett for giving us the most astonishing and the best formula free. He's not making money out of it. So 30 years ago, SRK2 was norm. At the time, they had Fiodorov, Binkos, and various formulas. But they found that, if I have a pointer, it'll be nice. They found that as the eye became shorter, 23, 22, 21 axial length became shorter, there was a 1, 2, 3 diopter error in these post-op patients. So what they did was, Sanders, Redstrap, and Trotz together, after seeing only 1,600 eyes, many of us work in hospitals where we do 1,600 eyes in a few months. After seeing the outcome, thank you, ma, of 1,600 eyes, in the year 1988, they came out with the SRK2, which many of us are still using. And all they did was, they just wanted to push this mean error down, and they said, okay, 20 millimeters, you add plus 3, 22 millimeters, you add plus 1, 21 millimeter, you add 2. So they just made a small change in the formula to push the error down. That's all they did. This is SRK2, which we are still happy with 30 years later. But then we had SRKT, which tried to make it even better, again with a very small number, 1,600 eyes only. When you had SRKT, instead of having a down dip like this, it became slightly better with one small dip here and one, and one small, small rise there. Now, if you can see, all these are axial length measurement based errors. We got errors depending on short eye or long eye, and that was a primary criteria which we chose the formula by. But what do we want? We want a super formula which is straight, flat, plano for all eyes, right? That's what we want. And we know from outcome measures we cannot get this with SRK2 or T or any other formula. Till about 15 years ago, and, and I think many of us here, short eye, Hoffa Q, normal eye, SRK T, or holiday one, and large eye, SRK T. That was a norm, and this was advised by the Royal College of Ophthalmology England, and this was the norm, I think, for nearly 15 years. Then Hagis came and holiday two came. Because holiday two cost nearly 75,000 rupees, very few of us made the effort of purchasing it. So Hagis was a free online formula. Instead of Making a choice of these various formulas and picking short eye and long eye, when currently we have the LADA super formula which tries to do it. It takes a little bit of half a Q, a little bit of holiday one, a little bit of Hagis, and depending on the axial length changes and the corneal power changes, it fits various part of each formula and tries to give you a optimized formula. So he is doing the work which we normally try to, we guess inky pinky punky and, and, and the LADA super formula does it for you. Our attitude about measurements and biometry totally changed with this paper by Jack Holliday and Gillis where they said you don't have all eyes are not the same like Dr. Arul said in the previous talk most of us have a normal eye, 90% of us have, a nor have patients with normal eyes so we get pretty good results but we also do have various combinations medium, short and long axial length and medium, short and large corneal diameters and, and K reading because we have three or three or types in each, we have nine combination of eyes. And when you have nine combination of eyes, all the formulas seem to work for the standard 22, 23, 24 eye. But all the formulas seem to go wrong when you have too short or too long an eye, or too flat or too steep a cornea. So, so when you have these 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 extreme a megalocornea with a very large anterior segment, but with a short posterior segment 
or the reverse, a microconia with axial myopia. We do see these kind of patients. The standard SRK2 and T cannot handle this. We need to have multiple variable formulas. So even today, the best formulas don't concentrate only on the axial length. They have started concentrating and optimizing for lens thickness. They started optimizing for the corneal curvature for multiple parameters. For those of us who don't want to go into optical biometry, please follow the Royal College of, of England standard 2018. This is two years old. If your eye is less than 22 millimeters, use Hagis or HoffaQ. Between 22 and 26, please use SRKT. If it is more than 26, please use Hagis or SRKT. Because of transcription errors, they advise Barrett's Universal 2 only if you're having an optical biometer which will do auto transcription, not manual transcription. This is a page from Dr. Warren Hill's uh, site where he, where he describes the different types of formulas, how they work, ray tracing or virgins formulas, the artificial intelligence formula of his own, and, and also in which kind of eyes they work. So the, the, the SRK2 and T's, they work only when you have a normal anterior segment. They don't work for extreme uh, anterior segment types. Our idea of the best formula totally changed with this paper, which was co-authored by jo Jack Holliday, where they had nearly 13,000 13, patients, all with, with, with Alcon IQ, and an additional 5,200 patients, with, 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 again with Alcon single piece. He compared several different types of formula, and this is the outcome chart that he got. So he did the surgery, and then he, he uh, re-ran the measurements through various formulas, and this is what he, he got. All the formulas will give an error. There is no formula which gives zero error straight across. And some of the worst formulas, are, I'll see this black and, and, and this green here. So half a Q, if you take it uh, all across, and, and, the, and, and the SRKT, especially for the, for the short eyes, will give extremely wrong, wrong readings. Okay? But he all, and he also found that lens thickness seems to play a part. If you have a thick lens and a thin lens, different formulas will give different kind of errors. There is no single formula which will give an ideal uh, result for all your patients across different lens thickness. Lens shape matters. If you put a, a technis lens, lens or if you put, a, put an Alcon three-piece lens and you use the best optimized formula and use optical biometry, you will have a varying results. So this is the A constant for a technis lens for an eye which is very short. You had to uh, choose 121 and not 119. Similarly, when, when as the patient becomes myopic, the A constant will become less and less and come to 118.4 one, one or 5. Again, for extreme axial myopia like 32 or 36, the graph goes up. This U-shaped curve, depending on the lens shape, is true for all lenses. Please believe me, the same lens cannot have a fixed A constant across all axial lens. It actually changes. Barrett tries to work on this. It has 3,000 lines of code and it tries to adjust for various types of lens shapes, various models, various lens thickness, various corneas. So Barrett today is accepted to be the, the optimal formula if you want to choose any one formula. And this uh, by no, 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 nobody else but Warren Hill and, ja and Jack Holiday, all of them feel if you want to choose any one formula, please go for the, for the online Barrett's current formula. How many of you believe that the Indians, the Chinese, the Japanese and the Caucasians need different lenses when they are measured with the same instrument and you're going to put the same lens? True. So depending on our race, the A constant will change, not only depending on our, on our cornea and the length. See, this is, a, this is an Alcon toric, and this is the Caucasian eye, and this is the Japanese eye. This is the Indian eye. If you have, an, uh, if you have a restore implanted in India, and the same Indian goes to, uh, goes to California and he has a surgery done, and they use a Caucasian optimized uh, uh, biometric formula in Ivo Master 700, he'll have a plus 0.5 error. There's a difference in the Indian eyes, the Japanese eyes, the Asian eyes and the Caucasian eyes. The ratio of the anterior and posterior segment are different. This is, so all these optimized for, uh, A constants for different races are present online. They are usually fed into your, into your optical biometers by the technician. Please have a look because he may put in an old version which is five years old. They are getting, op they are getting optimized constantly. My friends, a constants will also change depending on what machine you measure with. 
Today we have separate optimized A constants for Zeiss, for Hack Street, Linstar, for NIDEC, for Topcon. So as your measurements become more and more precise, and as you start doing a lot, and as throughout the world different surgeons are able to report their, their outcomes in different numbers of patients, I don't have to depend on my own outcome of 10 or 20 patients. I can actually learn from several hundreds and several thousand patients who have had results from different parts of the world. And you find that the machine makes a difference. Each machine needs its own optimized A, a constant. And all this is there and, 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 they, and, they, and they're changing. So this to answer the previous gentleman's question, axialent based formula will give you 80% within 0.5 diopter if you do it very carefully. And most of our patients will be happy with this. If you don't want to buy your BMW, uh, BMW and your second or third apartment or, or a farmhouse, you can buy your optical biometer and your IOL Master 700. Correct, Noru? Yeah. With careful optical biometry and current formula, we can get 92% of eyes within 0.5 diopter, and this is for the refractive uh, cataract surgeons. To get the best formula, don't go to your Ivel Master 700 or your Lens Star, it's not there. They have the older two year old version. You have to go to the version 2, which is available only in APACRS. So, only if you go to the Asia Pacific Association of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, uh, site and you and you choose a Barrett optimized suits from there the suite of formulas from there you, You'll be able to get the current generation of formula. You won't find it in the ASCR site You won't find it in your machines offline. This is uh, available online only and even here Please go for the don't uh, don't waste time doing a Barrett universal 2 straight away do a Barrett toric calculator version 2 and also you can do a Barrett True K toric calculator version 2 for the post classic eyes. If you do these two, these two formulas only, you'll be able to cover your entire, entire patient load. So the interface is very simple, the printers are very, very simple, and they don't uh, preserve the data, they, uh, and, you have, you, and there are a lot of nuances in that as you start using it, it, it becomes easier. And it will be a rare day when you get a one day after surprise. Perhaps it's not that they are perfect. You will still get a one day after surprise maybe in one in 2,000 patients. It will happen and it is for us to learn, learn from these patients. Thank you very much. Oh, we'll take any questions for Ramesh. Before the questions come up, I have one for you. I have a potential uh, patient. K1 is 46.75, K2 45.66, so one diopter of anterior curvature. And uh, anterior chamber depth is 3.44, axial length 16.75. So which formula would you use and what kind of error would be acceptable? Arul, I know what you're going to do, Arul. You're going to use half, half a Q. He will use half a Q and he'll, he'll fight with IO care and he'll get a lens from them. So. In these extreme short eyes, like 16, 18 uh, uh, millimeters, we don't have enough eyes to actually tell where the patient will, will go. And, and unless you know the anterior curvature and the posterior curvature of these high-powered lenses, like he, this patient may need, need a plus 60 or a, or a 65 lens, right? Uh, well, Hoffer Q said 54. 54. Um, no, no, 54, and um, they could not manufacture beyond 52.5. So we put it in, uh, I have a residue of two. Oh, okay, Arul. So it also depends on the manufacturer. The manufacturer, if in, in these rare cases, please go back to your manufacturer who does a good lens for you because he will learn from you and you will learn from him and he will know what the ELP of those eyes are. It is not possible for us to have one offline or online calculator which, which can do the work for you. Is that fine, Arul? Thank you. Any so, other questions? So nobody comments? knows. We don't have enough data to answer a question like that. Any questions for Dr. Ramesh? Uh, 